Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to teach you how to make pointers that point to structures. Alright, so we've made a lot of progress with structures so far. Let's continue with our progress. We're almost done with structures. After this we're going to move on to enumerators and enumerations, which are another data structure that we can learn about. And then finally we'll learn about classes and all that fun stuff, okay? So let's make again a structure for us to work with here. So structure, we'll call it human. And uh, human, we'll give it a name. We'll give it an age. So uh, integer age. And boolean has swag. So we want to make sure or keep track of our humans to know if they have swag or not, right? Because that's very important. So we'll do using namespace std. All right, cool. So now we can create humans, obviously. So let's create a human to work with here. So human bob is equal to, and we can give him some values. So bob needs a, na a name. So bob and uh, an age. So we'll say 56. And does bob have swag? Eh, bob doesn't have very much swag. So we'll say false. And there we go. So we've created a human called bob. That's the variable name. And um, so now we can create a pointer to a human if you want to, right? So if you remember how to create pointers, we need the data type that we're pointing to. So human. Then we need this, so that, that basically says, it, that's how you know it's a pointer, by having the asterisk there. And then now we need it to have a name, so we'll call it Bob PTR for Bob Pointer. Doesn't really matter what you call it, of course, you can call it anything. And now that we have created a, a Bob Pointer here, we can now uh, assign the address to this pointer here, so it has something to point to, right? So we'll do the address of Bob. So now we have created a pointer that points to the address of our uh, Bob variable here. Easy peasy, right? So now that we have this pointer here, let's try accessing the structure from that pointer by dereferencing it to access the values inside the structure, okay? So we'll just print out the contents of Bob is what I mean by using the pointer. So C out, we'll say contents of Bob. All right, simple enough. And now how do we access a member of a Bob pointer? So how do we access the member of a pointer to a human, right? So the member of a structure, that is a pointer. So let's do C out. And so normally you would dereference it first, right? So we could dereference Bob PTR, right? That's how you dereference a variable normally. And then you would provide, um, let's say we want to get the member of that dereference variable. So we want to get the age. So we'll do age and then inline. So you can't actually do this because um, there's operator precedence, right? Order of operations and all that fun stuff. So operator precedence, if you don't know, basically means that certain operators um, are more important more important than other operators so the more important operators will be executed first basically right so right here we have the indirection operator which is used to dereference a pointer as you know if you've seen my other pointer videos so that's how we get the uh, the value that's at the pointer's memory address but here we have the dot operator which is which is to access the uh, the member of a structure, okay? And the dot operator actually has a higher precedence than the indirection operator, so that means that the dot operator will be executed before the indirection operator. So basically, if we were to show this in terms of order of operations with parentheses, that means that we would get something like this. So that means that this will be executed first with the dot operator, and then it's dereferenced. So it's not dereferencing Bob Pointer and then doing the dot operator age. It's actually uh, doing Bob PTR dot age and then dereferencing it, the entire thing here, right? So that's not actually valid because age is not a pointer, right? So this would be the same thing as dereferencing. So if we give her the parentheses here, this would be the same thing as dereferencing age, right? But age, like I said, it's not a pointer, so you can't dereference it. So if you want to do it properly, you can actually just put a parentheses around this. So this will be executed first, and then you're going to dereference. I mean, so first you're going to dereference it, and then you're going to access the member of that dereference structure. Okay, that's one way to do it. But C++ actually added a new operator for structures and objects that you can use to make your life easier. So instead of doing this whole parentheses thing and all that fun stuff, you could also do Bob PTR, and then put an arrow, and then put the thing that you want to access. So this basically dereferences the pointer. Um, gets the structure and then does the dot operator to get the age. So that's actually an easier way to do it. That's called the, I believe this is called the structure pointer operator, but we can just call this the arrow operator, which is obviously easier to understand, right? So yeah, we're going to use this arrow operator to access the uh, the members of our pointer after dereferencing the structure, right? So first we need the name, right? And then we want to do the same thing for the other values. So we want to do the age. 
and then we want to do dot ptr has swag. And again, I'm calling it the arrow operator because it looks like an arrow has a dash and a a uh, what's that called? A bracket? A what's that called? Angle bracket. So um, yeah, so that's again just to recap. That's going to dereference it and access the member of the structure after it's been dereferenced all in one go without having to do anything special to worry about the uh, operator precedence and all that stuff. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's how you dereference a structure and then access the member of a structure. But don't forget, we can also use uh, dynamic allocation to dynamically allocate structures as well. That's a thing we can do. So let me just get rid of all this here. Let's make a new human called human. And we're going to dynamically allocate this human. So we're going to need to make this a pointer. Since for dynamic allocation, it's going to be allocated upon the heap. So you need to store the address of that dynamically allocated structure into a pointer. That's how you keep track of it, right? Otherwise, it's going to be... Uh, you know, stuck there forever, I guess. So we're going to make a new human. So we have defined a new human upon the heap. So it's going to be dynamically allocated. And then we're storing that address in our human pointer here. So now that we have that new uh, dynamically allocated human, we can then give it some values. So let's do a uh, human and we can dereference it like we just saw a second ago with the arrow operator. And we can give it some values like the name. So we can say human name is equal to and we can give it whatever name we want. So we'll say Henry, oops, Henry. And then we can do human age is equal to 16. Human uh, will do, has swag. Henry does not have swag, but we'll just say true anyway. So Henry has swag, I guess. And so now that we have our, uh, we've given our dynamically allocated human some values, we can then print out those values by accessing them basically the same exact way we just did a second ago. So we'll print them out. So see out human name, see out human, human age, see out human has swag. So if this works correctly, we should have. Um, those values printed out back to us after we run this. So let's try running this. All right, there we go. So we got our Henry printed out. So it says Henry, if you, I know it's a little small, but it says Henry 16 and then one. And it's printing out one instead of true, obviously, because it's a, uh, that's just how booleans are printed out to the console. And um, yeah, so that worked perfectly. We have dynamically allocated a human. So that's how you do that. It's exactly the same way as you would do it with primitive values. And um, so, Obviously, now that we're done using it, we want to delete the uh, this, the memory that we've allocated, so free up the space. That's good practice. So delete human, and then we want to set human equal to null pointer for safety, basically. So we're not uh, accidentally messing with a uh, memory address, right? All right, so that's how you do that. And the one final thing I want to show you is how to pass a pointer to a function. We've already dealt with this in detail in our other pointer videos, but just for recap, I'll show you how to do it with this. So we're going to make a very simple function here called set human. And we're going to pass in a pointer to human. So human pointer here. And then what we're going to do in that uh, function here is we're going to ask, ask the user for the name, the age, and if it has swag. And then we're going to set those values. And we're going to print them after we're done. So, so let me show you here. So we'll do uh, hello time to create a new human. All right, and in line, see how, so the first thing we need is a name, right? So we'll say enter name, and then we'll do cn, and we, sorry if you're in my speaker, but if you, uh, if you want, you could make a, a name variable here, like we would probably normally do, so string name, like we could do that if we want to, sorry about my bad typing, but we could do that, if, we could do that if we want to, but an easier thing to do would be to just directly dereference the structure the pointer structure or pointer to a structure and then set the value like this. So a uh, human dereference or error operator and then name. So that should set the name. We're doing the C in the input stream and we're setting the name member of our dereferenced human pointer. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So we don't need this variable is what I'm trying to show you here. And then we can do the other value. So the age and the has swag or not. So enter age. So C in human age. Cool. And then one final thing. Uh, does he have swag? True or false? 
I think you can enter true or false for this. I'm not sure if you have to enter true or false for one or zero. I guess we'll find out. So human has swag. Okay, okay, cool. So we can all, wait, yeah, that's good. So now that we have this set human function here that accepts a human pointer, we can then create a human for us to actually test this on. So human, human two. And, um, and then we'll do set human. So we can just pass in the mem uh, memory address of human two, just like that, by using the uh, ampersand there. So what that is going to do, just to recap, is basically we're going to pass in the memory address of human two. It's going to pass it into this function here, which is basically going to create a pointer out of that. And then we're going to dereference that pointer um, while setting the values at the same time for each of those members for the structure, okay? So now that we've done that, we can then print out the structure just for testing purposes to make sure it worked. So let me just cut and paste that just for time here. So yeah, let's try running this now. We'll see if it breaks or not. If it works, let's see what happens. All right, so it says, hello, time to create a new human. Enter name, we'll say Andy. Enter age, Andy's 12 years old. And does he have swag? No, Andy has no swag, he's a loser. So we'll put false. Yep, so there we go, we get Andy, 12 and zero, printed out back to the console on these lines here. So that's that's perfect, that's exactly what we expected. Andy's a loser, he has no swag, he's 12 years old, and there we go, easy peasy. So yeah, that's how you use um, structures and pointers together. That's how you make pointers that point to structures, in case you were wondering, it's the exact same way. The only difference really is just the arrow operator that we were using, just to dereference and set the access the members of a dereference uh, structure. So yeah, that's about it for that. Uh, keep in mind, I'll have all the code for today's episode in the description below, so check out the link there. If you want to come back to it later on, I'll have a bunch of comments around the code so you can see the explanation in case you don't want to watch the video again. Also, we have a Discord community. We have a big Discord community with about 1,200 members, so you can get some friends if you don't have any. You can also get some help if you need help on your programming stuff. You can join and ask for help there if you want to. And so I'll leave the link for that in the description below. So one more thing, there is a join button below this video. You can support this channel if you want to. If you like the videos, you can join this channel as a member for 90, as low as 99 cents a month. You can become a YouTube donator and you can cancel any time if you want to. And you can get some cool perks. You can get uh, some perks like a cool Discord rank. You can get um, early access to these videos. So if you want to see all my videos ahead of time, you can become a donator. And you can also get a shout out like you see on the screen right now. So these are all my current donators. You can be up on the screen if you want to. And you can also get the other perks. So like I said, you can join as low as 99 cents just by clicking the join button below this video next to the subscribe button. So yeah, that's about it for that. And that's it for this video. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.